Welcome, dear viewers, to another enlightening episode of our channel. Today, we are delving into the educational aspect of a renowned scholar who left an indelible mark on history, Ibn Sina, also known as Avicenna. Join us as we explore his philosophical insights, contributions to medicine and his views on education and ethics. Ibn Sina, whose name echoes through time, has hailed by scholars of his era and modern thinkers alike as a luminary in Islamic philosophy. His influence on various fields is undeniable, as George Anwati noted in his comprehensive bibliography of Ibn Sina's writings. Notably, in 1950, the Egyptian National Library commemorated the thousandth anniversary of his birth by publishing a list of extensive works revealing the vast scope of knowledge he possessed and imparted. Ibn Sina's legacy spans philosophy and medicine. With his philosophical insights captivating Western minds for centuries, his magnum opus, the Canon of Medicine, was even translated into Latin, serving as a cornerstone for medical studies in European universities for centuries. Such profound impact across cultures highlights the far-reaching influence of his ideas. While much attention has been given to Ibn Sina's philosophical and medical contributions, his view on education have remained somewhat less exported. Yet, within his vast body of work, we find glimpses into his thoughts on humanity, society, knowledge and ethics. His treaties, politics and insights within the Kanun offer us valuable insights into his educational philosophy. Ibn Sina wasn't just a philosopher, he was a dedicated educator who practiced what he preached. His tradition from a young scholar to a practical teacher underscored his commitment to transforming philosophical thought into a tangible educational theory. His practical experiences fueled his educational perspectives, aligning philosophy with the art of teaching. Ibn Sina's upbringing during the flourishing Abbasid period provided him a fertile ground for intellectual growth. Born in a family deeply involved in intellectual pursuits, he swiftly mastered various disciplines, from philosophy to medicine. His inclination towards knowledge, natured by tutors and mentors, marked the early stages of his remarkable journey. At the heart of Ibn Sina's educational philosophy lies his view of the human being, a synthesis of hidden and open elements, intertwining body and soul. He emphasized the importance of a balanced education that cultivates moral character and nurtures reason. His teachings on society's divine nature, the importance of a ruler consultation, and the perpetual pursuit of knowledge resonate with timeless wisdom. Ibn Sina's educational philosophy places great emphasis on holistic growth. He believes that education should encompass physical, mental and moral development, culminating in the preparation of individuals to contribute meaningful to society through chosen professions based on their aptitudes. In contrast to focusing solely on intellectual pursuits, Ibn Sina's approach aims to create a well-rounded personality, complete in body, mind and character. He envisions education as not only fostering good citizens, but also enabling individuals to specialize and excel in their chosen fields, thus fostering the cooperation that underpins the society. 
despite being a philosopher and living in an era where philosophers were considered an intellectual elite, Ibn Sina's educational goals extended beyond training philosophers. He recognized the importance of education for various vocations, and he includes the education of philosophers as one of his aims for those inclined towards philosophical pursuits. This distinction sets his approach apart from contemporaries like Al-Ghazali and Al-Qabisi. Ibn Sina's vision of education encompasses both intellectual pursuits and vocational training. He sees intellectual work as encompassing traditional and theoretical sciences, while also valuing industry or crafts that require practical skills. His assertion that vocational training demands specialized preparation reflects his belief in the importance of hand-on skills, which he views as essential for a balanced and productive society. What are the educational stages according to Ibn Sina? The first one is the infant stage, birth to two years. Ibn Sina's concern for children begins from birth, with attention to their physical well-being. He offers guidance on practices like cutting the umbilical cord, gentle messages, and proper bathing. Sleep, feeding, and maintaining a suitable environment are also areas of focus. He emphasizes the importance of infant sleep conditions, hygiene, and gradual weaning from breastfeeding. Stage 2. The stage of childhood. 3 to 5 years. Ibn Sina regards his stage as critical for development of morals, physical activity and taste. He emphasizes the need for play, exercise and exposure to music. Ibn Sina's belief in music's role in shaping taste and character is evident as he recommends incorporating music into a child's routine from a young age. This phase lays the foundation for moral values, social skills and basic appreciation of aesthetics. The third stage is actually called the first stage of teaching, 6 to 14 years old. Ibn Sina divides this stage into the learning of foundational Islamic religion and culture. Students are introduced to the Quran, Arabic poetry, calligraphy and more moral principles. Ibn Sina's emphasis on choosing poems that promote virtues and discourage um, vices reflects his commitment to shaping young, young minds through literature. Play and exercise remain important during this period, ensuring physical health and group interaction. The other stage is called the specialized education stage, 14 years old and onwards. At this point, students begin specialized education based on their aptitudes and interests. Ibn Sina stresses the importance of aligning education with individual preferences and abilities. He views education as a preparation for one's future profession and contributing to society. Ibn Sina's approach acknowledges the diversity of talents and focuses on nurturing them to build a strong workforce and harmonious society. Well, of course, all Ibn Sina's work is uh, male-oriented and his writings about girls are limited. He suggests that their education should align with their roles as wives, mothers and sisters. He leaves the responsibility of teaching girls moral, religious and cultural education to families, recognizing that their societal roles differ from those of boys. Ibn Sina's educational philosophy remains relevant, emphasizing the need for well-rounded development, individualized instruction, 
practical application and the role of educators as mentors. His insights continue to provide valuable guidance for modern educational practices that aim to nurture capable, ethical and contributing members of society. As we conclude our exploration of Ibn Sina's educational insights, we stand in awe of this intellectual prowess that continues to enlighten and inspire. His holistic approach to education, his integration of philosophy into pedagogy and his profound understanding of human nature showcase a philosopher who remains relevant to this day. Thank you for joining us on this journey through the educational insights of Ibn Sina. If you found this exploration as enlightened as we did, do not forget to hit that like button, share your thoughts in the comments below and subscribe to our channel for more captivating content. Until next time, keep seeking knowledge and embracing the wisdom of the past to illuminate our present and shape our future.